It is time for our KSAT Q&A with Mayor Ron Nuremberg. At this time last week, uh, Tim Gerber, Myra Arthur were sitting in these seats talking to the mayor, talking about you know the early parts of what would play out over the next few days. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Uh, right off the top, are you satisfied with your own city government's response to what happened last week? Um, no, I mean, I don't think anybody's satisfied with what's happened over the last week, which is why I've set up a select committee uh, made up of council members as well as some uh, folks in the community, respected leaders in our community, to examine what happened, uh, to make sure that we can understand the preparations, the communication, and the response to the, the event. Um, I think that we will find things that went uh, well, uh, things uh, that we need to improve. So I don't think we can. any of us should be satisfied with what occurred last week. Uh, and we will identify the things that are within our control that we can change. I think we'll find a lot of things that unfortunately are outside of our control that contributed to the event. But certainly uh, everything that uh, we can control locally needs to be examined and improved uh, as necessary. You mentioned preparation and response, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Can you tell us exactly what those preparations look like? When did they start? When did, what did it entail? Sure. Uh, well, they started uh, probably four or five days or more prior to the winter storm hitting. So we're talking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of the prior week before the storm arrived. And at that time, we were planning on some very, uh, you know, cold weather and precipitation. So what we usually see in South Texas is an ice event. We were preparing infrastructure. So we began having uh, daily uh, emergency prep calls that included TxDOT, our public works, as well as our utilities to make sure that we had the infrastructure prepared. Uh, the triggering event, of course, happened, as everyone knows, in the dead of night on Monday, uh, Monday morning, when ERCOT, the state uh, management of the energy grid, went from level one, which is normal, to three, which is critical, uh, within a span of minutes in, in the middle of the night with no notification or no advance warning. Uh, and that's when we saw all of the blackouts occur. So prior to that occurring, it was uh, more of a, a, a transportation safety event. Uh, and then it turned into something altogether uh, different than what we've seen in, in quite a long time. You had no inkling that the power out, rolling power outages were about to occur? None, none. In fact, uh, I remember asking the question, how are we preparing our, our utilities? Because normally during an ice event, we do see outages related to down power lines because ice accumulates on branches, branches fall, can also cut uh, those power lines when they fall. So we were preparing on, on outages like that. But the fact that uh, ERCOT had apparently stable and, and reserve energy enough to be at level one, uh, but quickly turned upside down within minutes uh, on Monday morning was something that they w we did not get any advance warning on. And that's something that state lawmakers are gonna have to look at. The, the, the management in terms of uh, preparing local communities for what could happen on the state's grid uh, was complete, completely outside the bounds of what we were preparing for and what we were notified about. Mr. Mayor, we still have a few more questions for you. We're going to ask you to stick around. We'll be right back after this. Sure. We're back with San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg for our KSAT Q&A. Mr. Mayor, I, I know there's been a lot of criticism, and perhaps rightly so, for ERCOT, but that doesn't necessarily mean that CPS Energy and SAWS are off the hook in some of the blame to go around, does it? Not at all. In fact, uh, that's why I called uh, and formed the select committee to examine local response. Um, there are things w that are outside of our control, and, and, and you talked about ERCOT, but there are also things within our control and, and, and coordination among our utilities with the city and the county uh, are all very important. And we want to make sure that those things that, that didn't happen do happen this next go round. I mean, one of the things that we clearly know is that we have to examine what's on a critical critical circuit. Uh, the fact that pumping stations, for instance, were taken offline, which did affect water service, cannot happen, uh, should not happen, and, and will not happen going forward if I have anything to do with it. So that's the committee that we'll look at in an independent manner, uh, the things that, that happened at the local level 
and see what needs to change. There has been such a big discussion about the warming center, and I want to ask you about that. Why wait until Tuesday, two days after the storm hit, to open that first warming center? When did talks occur about whether or not to open them? And should this have been done before the storm hit? Yeah, so there were warming centers uh, throughout the event. In fact, prior to the storm arriving, warming centers were open through um, churches and things like that. Uh, that we're providing relief to folks. Uh, we were also working to, you know, again, do outreach to make sure that people were getting in facilities. Uh, as, the, as the outages began to accumulate and extend, uh, the city manager began to work on a, a centralized warming center, uh, but also to include making sure that it was on a central uh, critical circuit so it wouldn't lose power and wouldn't lose water once we got started getting people under one roof. So uh, that's the reason it was open on Tuesday. But in the meantime, we were getting everyone out off of the street during the winter storm. Talk about the relief that the relief funds that are out there right now and the effort to raise uh, money to help our neighbors. Yeah, sure. Um, so there's a number of different avenues for assistance. And, and as you might remember, I, I also initiated a request through the federal government that was granted this past weekend to provide individual assistance for things like pipe repairs. And that covers folks to get reimbursements from the federal government for pipe repairs if they don't have homeowners insurance. But we also wanted to make sure that there was immediate uh, relief now for folks, insurance status neutral, so that they could access funds to get pipe repairs and, and things underway immediately. So that's the community pipe repair fund that's set up through SAWS and people are already donating it to, to it. I have to thank many members of the community and corporate citizens that have already donated to it. People can get information by going to saws.org slash CPR. In addition to that, as we know, one of our great community philanthropists, Gordon Hartman, has started a Let's Help SA uh, program. Uh, and you can go to let's help, letshelpsa.org to get more information about how you can contribute to a fund that is targeting to three nonprofits that are very critical right now, Sam Ministries, Haven for Hope, and the San Antonio Food Bank, and that's already well underway as well. And people can donate through the uh, through Sunday uh, for that fund. These are targeted relief efforts to make sure that we get folks in our community back on their feet as they have experienced tragedy and and, and challenges throughout this year, but particularly during the storm event. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.